A few days ago, the Laowa 4mm fisheye was released for Sony E-mount and other mounts. What makes this lens special is the 210 degree view angle. So with only two pictures, you can take a full 360 degree image. This is very interesting in case you are planning to do a 360 time-lapse video, since you only need two cameras instead of four. This lens is designed for APS-C cameras, but I wanted to see how it performs on a full-frame camera like the Sony a7 III. In this video, I will first make an unboxing, then show you some example images, and at the end I will edit a complete 360 degree image and export it for a web browser. You will find all raw files and the 360 degree image later in the comment section. The Laowa 4mm is only $200, but it comes in a very nice small package. As you might notice, the lens almost dropped down, so you should be very careful when moving it, since it is very fragile due to the lens design. The lens feels pretty heavy for the small size. This is because everything, even the lens cover, is made from metal, so the lens feels very high quality, although it is only $200. The lens is fully manual, so you have to set focus and aperture directly on the lens. As you can see, this lens is definitely designed for APS-C cameras. If you use it in full frame mode, only a small portion of the sensor is used. You can set your camera to the X mode to make the image larger, but of course this won't increase the total resolution. As you can see, that because of the very wide viewing angle, my fingers are visible on the right side of the image. So it is recommended to use a tripod when using this lens.
Here you can see two example images. The first one was taken in full frame mode and the second one in DX mode, which is a 1.5 crop factor. I have added some lines in Photoshop to be able to measure how much of the image is actually used. Let's have a closer look. Imagine that this grey rectangle is the sensor size of the Sony a7 III. So it takes 6000 times 4000 pixel, which is a total 24 megapixel. The blue circle is the used image area when shooting in full frame mode. With the lower 4mm it is around 2150 pixel in diameter, which is around 3.64 megapixel. This is because the lens is designed for APS-C cameras and not for full frame sensors. So only 15% of the whole sensors are being used when shooting with a full frame camera. If you want to make full use of the lens, you need to use an APS-C camera like the Sony A6600. You could also use a high resolution full frame camera like the Sony A7R 3 Let's check the image quality. As you can see, because of the small use of the sensor, the resolution is not that great, so you won't be able to zoom in or capture details. The lens has also some issues with chromatic aberration. Of course this can be fixed in editing, but you should be aware of this when shooting. Let's check another example and do a complete 360 degree image only from two pictures. I will do some basic adjustments and then export the images as JPEGs. Here I will bring up the shadows to see how the image quality changes. As you might notice, the lens has an issue with flaring. There is a complete flare on the upper part of the image. This is also because of the lens design and on the specific location there are light sources from every direction. So after saving the images as JPEGs, I will open them in PTGUI, which is the best software for stitching photos together. It also has already support for the lower 4mm, so the process is very simple. Since the lens does not provide sufficient EXIF information, you have to type in the focal length, which is 4mm. The presets will then update and you are able to choose the lower 4mm. You also have to adjust the camera, because the image was taken with a full frame camera, but in DX mode, so the crop factor must be set correctly. 
To make sure everything is alright, you should check the crop tab and confirm that the circle was set correctly. Now click on a line and adjust the image to be straight as possible. Create a panorama and save it as JPEG. On the preview, you are able to check the 360 degree image and move around. So it looks pretty good and everything worked properly. To publish such 360 degree image, you need to convert it into a web browser suitable format. I am using Pano 2 VR for this, but there are also other tools available. Just load the image which you have saved in PTGUI and everything else should be done automatically. I have noticed that the image is slightly tilted, so I will adjust the pitch and roll. It looks very good, but I want to check in detail if both images are stitched properly and compare the edges of both images. So this is the area where both images are combined and there are no issues or errors which must be fixed. Let's check the other side to see if everything has worked properly. Everything is ok, so it can be exported as HTML5. You can then upload a folder to your server and open the finished image in your web browser. When I stitch the second image, I have noticed that the previous mentioned flare was visible in the complete 360 degree image, so you should remove it during the complete process. So, 
What's the conclusion on this lens? The build quality is very high. There is no plastic and everything feels and looks very good. But the image quality could be better. The main issues are the chromatic aberrations and the lens flares. The lens flares might only be an issue during night. But this could be a big issue depending on the surrounding light sources. I was testing this lens on a full frame camera. Since it was designed for APS-C cameras, I could not get the perfect resolution. The finished 360 degree image had a resolution of 10 megapixel, which is too low for my standards. So I won't be using this lens and will check on other solutions to get 360 degree time lapse during nighttime.